Fantasy Esque and welcome back to The Sims 4 Vampire Amazon with the Salazar Coven. Before we begin, I want to say a very special welcome to my channel members. Thank you so, so much for your support. I appreciate it immensely. We are continuing from the previous episode with Galaxia, who is trying to get closer to our alchemist so that she can ask her for a drink. Now, we tried to figure out some of Galaxia's motives behind that previously, but I'm not entirely sure. Maybe we have to see how this is going to go exactly before we try and ascertain if she is going to be like her sister, Safira, or if she's going to be a little bit more different. But okay, we're going to get that going. I think we also have to talk a little bit about Zelda's opinion of the alchemist, um, I think Oriana's opinion, and then Safira, not Safira. Sapphire, geez, Sapphire herself is going to be getting some medical attention from the priestess. So, okay guys, let's dive into it without waiting too long. But look at how lovely Galaxia is. She is beautiful. My goodness, my goodness. I've noticed this quite a bit. I feel like there are times with certain Sims that I don't fully appreciate their beauty until, like, episodes after their makeover when I'm not expecting to be getting into the finer details of their appearance and I see them in a scene and it just strikes me as stunning but it happened to me just then with Galaxia. So I think we did try and um, get it to ask Sapphire for a drink but Lady Sapphire rejected her quite aggressively. Um, but Galaxia is not one to, to lose out on things like that. She is going to keep trying to butter up Sapphire until she gets exactly what she wants. Now, previously, I don't remember, I don't remember too much of what I discussed in terms of Sephira and Galaxia. I think, I think I mentioned that, um, Sephira, yeah, I think Sephira is the, the sister who kind of is assuming a lot of Isadora's um, opinions on alchemists and, you know, foreign blood and and basically being the superior race of a vampire and thus looking down on the alchemists. I think she's inheriting a lot of that from her, her mentor, Lady Isadora. Um, but her sister Galaxia, I'm thinking is a little bit different, but I'm not entirely sure because if we, if we think back to Zelda, Zelda didn't treat Zora all that well when Zora started out here and that's why um, the Salazar sisters had a bit of a rift like the Salazar twins but let's just let's get going um, I need to track down Sapphire for one who is down here dancing with Zelda look at this she's dancing with Zelda okay um, you know what maybe we need to dance with her maybe dancing with her is a good way to kind of build up rapport and then we might slowly end up being friends and things might not be nearly as embarrassing. But I think this socially awkward uh, mood that she has is quite possibly from prematurely asking Sapphire for a drink and then getting rejected. But that's okay. Galaxia is quite adventurous. I imagine her to be quite bold. And even though she is a loner, I feel like being a loner means you pick your friends very carefully. Um, like you, you, she's not like Siri who just befriends anyone and everyone. She keeps a small circle and she picks them very carefully. Now who's calling Sapphire? Oh, I was going to answer that. Okay, well she's missing the train entirely. <laughs> she just came down to dance and Sapphire left. Sapphire! Galaxia's not going down there to dance. She's going down there to build a relationship with you. <sighs> ay, ay, ay. Okay, um, you know what? Maybe we need to, maybe we need to joke with her a little bit. I don't know how much of a humorous mood she's going to be in, but we need to try. So let's stop dancing while Sapphire's getting herself a drink, whatever she's doing. Um, oh look, the twinsies! You know how many times... I jump to one of these guys and then I see them with their twin. It makes me so happy that they autonomously just seek each other out and spend a lot of time in each other's company. Ah, that just, that just makes my heart swell. But okay, 
let's uh, let's go upstairs, try and find Sapphire, and don't pester her, I would say. Just um, try and be a, a bit more humorous, friendly. Show her the, 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 you know, appealing side of yourself. Show her that her neck can be trusted in your, in your jaws, essentially. <laughs> ah, Sapphire is so gorgeous. So, so pretty. But, okay, she's joking with her. Sapphire is being quite receptive. Let's complain about the heat wave. Maybe we can bond over that a little bit. And I'm going to keep an eye on um, their relationship here to see when they become friends. Okay, it is quite hot. My goodness, it is very hot today. Very, very hot. We are well and truly into summer. So, okay, Yuki wants to join the conversation. That is okay. Let's uh, give her a heartfelt compliment. A heartfelt compliment might be nice. There we go, there we go. I also wonder if some of the vampires might be fascinated with Sapphire, if Sapphire is romantically involved with the Queen, because they might want to know, like, what is it about her that makes Queen Wisteria drawn to this non-vampiric female? So I could, I could kind of see that being a thing for the the younger generation, like with Saf uh, I mean with Galaxia, um, potentially Siri and Aphrodite. So okay, let's uh, brighten day. Let's go brighten her day. <clears throat> now, one thing that um, one of you lovelies mentioned on Princess Aphrodite is that a lot of the times when we are looking at her, she gets very angry, like just over little things. She gets very angry because of a high maintenance trait. So her, her mood fluctuates, it's like everywhere. And one of the things you lovely said is that maybe in her generation when she is queen, we'll see um, like a lot more punishments, but punishments of smaller scale over small things um, because of that high maintenance trait. So rather than handing out executions um, at important intervals, she's probably going to be handing out petty punishments um, because she's constantly just getting annoyed by things um, and over little things. And because she's so caught up on the little things, she's not going to hand out like death sentences and stuff like that. So that's kind of interesting. I could see that, especially because she does get angry over the smallest things quite at random times and initially I because I've never played with that high maintenance trait I thought that you know let's just kind of see how this how this oh no 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 not you not you not you I thought let's just see how this pans out and um, we'll learn more about the princess as time goes but what I'm kind of getting is that as Aphrodite has assumed the title of princess more and more in her teenage years. Or, well, she's not a teenage teenager anymore. She's a young adult. But in her, you know, immortal years, that privilege is starting to get a little bit out of hand. In that when she was younger, she was innocent and forgiving. Now that she's older, I think she's wrapped herself in this cocoon of I'm a princess, I am royalty, I am in line. Um, and therefore my mood matters above all else. I think she's too wrapped up in that, and so she loses sight of the things that are important. Which is also why I think that she's going to be relying on the people around her to make important decisions. So the court that we have in the next generation, like the people that's made up of is going to be very, very central to kind of how her reign ends up. Oh, are we, are we we're working on this, we're befriending each other. Um, let's see. Discuss if the chicken came first, because that is a very important discussion topic. <laughs> ah. Okay. Let's um let's chat on that. Uh, dance techniques since um Sapphire, I think, likes to dance. A lot of the Sims do, I think. Some of them don't. Some of them don't. Um yep. Let's just chit-chat about that. 
Come on, Sapphire. Let down your guard. Be let us be your friend, please. Please let us be your friend. Let's see. But also, I... I don't know if this would be a genuine friendship, even if it does develop, just because Galaxia is doing this for the sole purpose of being able to drink from Sapphire. Like, maybe. There we go. I've gained a sentiment! But maybe she's gotten some of that taste of fresh plasma, and so she wants, like, her own personal juice box. And... Who knows? Maybe the dragon sisters, like the dragon twins, they have the same opinion of alchemists, which is that they're superior that the vampires are superior, but they have different ways of going about it. Um, so Sephira, you know, quite actively, doesn't like putting up with Sapphire, whereas Galaxia is happy to butter up because she's looking at the bigger picture. She's gonna get some fresh blood if she does so. Now she's gonna ask again, and let's see if this time she's, oh, darn it, darn it. Okay, we're gonna have to come back to Sapphire later on because it looks as though Galactica has been working on her quite nicely, but unfortunately she was recently drank from, so she needs some time to recuperate. She needs another six hours, my goodness. Ah oh well, ah oh well. We'll come back to it in a little bit. Let's jump to Zelda and see how Zelda's doing. Now, she wants to play a card game, so I'm excited. This is going to be a great chance for her to build up some uh, relationships. Now... How does she feel about Sapphire? Okay, so she's kind of the same... Like, she's at the same place that Galaxia is, which is interesting. So, I'm wondering if they have kind of changed their attitude towards, you know, a, a new alchemist. But also, I feel like the vampires would be aware right now in the coven that Sapphire is very close to Wisteria. Um, she's special to Wisteria right now, right? Um, I don't think that Sapphire and Wisteria could ever have a meaningful relationship. I feel like Wisteria treats Sapphire as a toy, but I also think that Sapphire is aware of that and willing because it's giving him certain privileges. Um, but regardless of what it is, I think Zelda is aware of that right now. So she's being careful with how she treats Sapphire because, I mean, before with Zora, Zora wasn't even romantically involved with Wisteria. And Zelda was trying to put her in her place, but she ended up damaging the bond she had with her twin sister. So I think with everything that's happened, she is a little bit wiser from her experiences and she doesn't want a repeat of that. So she's going to be very cautious about how she treats Sapphire. I don't think her innate um, opinion that she's, you know, always had, always grown up with, that the vampires are superior to spellcasters, I don't think that's going to go away, but I think she's a lot more careful about how she acts. Now who is this? One of the sons, I assume, Ronald Salazar. Okay, well, Ronald. Ronald. Um, actually, let's get Oriana. Uh, what is she doing? She's um, cleaning some stuff up. Zelda, why don't you come here and uh, invite him in? I mean, we don't typically have... We don't typically have the sons visiting us exactly. But let's invite Ronald in. We'll invite him in so that whoever wants to chat with him can do that. Um, and then we have to go to the, um, throne room anyways, because we need to play a card game. We're gonna play a card game. And, um, that's gonna help out with some of the relationships. So, I usually go over here, but I've noticed that, I think I've set this up as the, don't wait the llama table. And then we have a card game table over here, so, you know, we don't have to keep switching, works out. If need be, we can, t like, play two games at once. Okay, there we go, Ronald. Feel free to run around the castle and chat with whoever you want. Okay. Let's play cards with... Who in the household does she have a low relationship with? So... Huh. Huh, huh, huh. Okay, so I think she's got the lowest... I mean, obviously this isn't everyone in the household. Um, I think it only pulls, like the game only pulls people from close by. 
So in the vicinity, we need three players. I think uh, Wisteria would be good to build up your relationship with Wisteria a little bit more. And then I think Yuki and Galaxia, actually. I think Yuki, Galaxia, Wisteria, yeah. Bond with your apprentice slash daughter. Bond with your twin sister. And bond with your niece. There we go. Let's go do that for these guys while Ronald sits in the entryway and just reads a book about something. But we'll play, we'll play with um, those guys. Come on, let's get settled. Let's get settled. So there we go. It's kind of interesting to see that the mentors having, or the apprentices having the same kind of relationships with, um, like, I mean, the, the apprentices having the same opinions as their mentors, or similar opinions, because obviously they're learning. Yep, nephew. We have a lot of family members in the next generation. Um, a lot of family members. Everyone is pretty much related. I think we have no new blood. And because of that, uh, quite possibly, we're going to be relying a lot on, um, like, fresh males who... Um, are brought into Willow Creek for the sole purpose of breeding and not joining the army because a lot of these ladies are family members so it's it's kind of difficult not to be related and at least with my like the base game because I don't have any mods that allow this you can't really inbreed your sims at all um, I haven't tested um, how that works if you're removed by several generations. Like, for example, I am curious to know whether or not um, Yuki and um, some of the others, maybe the Dragon Sisters, I'm curious to know if they can breed with Narcissus's sons. But, like, they would be great uncles, I think. But I don't know if the game recognizes that as, like, inbreeding. So... We'll have to see. We will have to see. Okay, you guys uh, you done playing? Done playing? Okay, they're done. Now, Oriana, whatever her whim was has been completed, but I don't think it's going to harm us to um, kind of see her relationship with Sapphire. It's not that bad. It is not that bad. She does not get along with Isadora, of course. Um, did she get along well with Zora? When Zora was alive, she did. She was friends with Zora. Um, when Zora was alive. Um, I think Oriana, she's kind of like on the fence. She doesn't have anything, in my opinion, against, based on how she treated Zora. I don't think she has an against, anything against alchemists, but she doesn't feel the need to chummy up to Sapphire either. She's kind of just keeping a distance. Like, Sapphire does what she needs to do. Oriana's going to do what she needs to do. So that makes a lot of sense. There's really nothing. And I think her mind's, to be honest, quite taken up by Isadora right now. So she's, you know, busy trying to deal with all of that. Um, and she doesn't really have time for much else. Okay, Sapphire. Now, Galaxia, you don't have, like, a bad ability, do you? I don't think she does. I don't think she has any sort of bat ability. Um, Vampiric Strength would be good, but I kind of want her to get that bat form. So, okay, weakness. There we go. She's going to get bat form. Just because I want her to be able to bat places. So let's go do that. There we go. She's going to get a bat form going, and then... <laughs> Because I want her to be able to just bat form into the alchemist's quarters because it is locked. <laughs> but I wanted to be able to do that. So come on. Let's, uh, let's just go in. Nobody has access to those quarters, but we're going to bat form in here. We're going to, can we, can we wake up? We want to wake up. Oh, jeez, jeez. She's lost in there somewhere. Let's wake up. Sapphire. I'm going to keep mixing up Sapphire and Sapphira. My bad guys, you know who I'm talking about. It's just, I'm so used to saying Sapphira, 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 and now we have a Sapphire. So, I might confuse things sometimes. 
But in my head, I know who I'm talking about. Okay, let's try and wake up Sapphire. And then we are gonna politely ask her for a drink. Come on, and she's really... Let's ask, but maybe this is not the best time because she is angry. Oh, she got awoken. She's very upset that Galaxia snuck into her room and woke her up. But Galaxia's gonna try. She's gonna try for a drink. And I think she got re she got rejected. And she got rejected. Oh my goodness, this is a this is a bit of a battle. Yep, she got rejected. That wasn't a great time. Yep, she is not happy and not okay with that at all. But is is Galaxia going to give up? No, it is midnight. She does not care, necessarily. She's gonna uh, describe this new idea. <laughs> She's gonna describe this new idea about how they could be of, you know, assistance to each other. Um, and how Galaxia, you know, as the queen's niece, could help to make things easier, and as the eldest one in the next generation, to make things easier for her, um, if they just have a, a better relationship, and, you know, she gains something in return, like a drink, whenever she wants. So, she's gonna, she's gonna chum me up to her a little bit. They're gonna chat over here. This is an interesting sight, because... The alchemists never invite vampires into their bedrooms for obvious reasons. You don't want to give them any tempting reason to drink from you, of course. So, there you go. There you go. Okay. Let's um, talk about dreams. Talk about the fact that um, you're the future priestess. And um, more or less, the next generation lies in your hands. Oh my goodness, I'm getting a call, so I'm I'm sorry if my phone is vibrating really crazy and that sound's coming across. Okay, um... Oh, come on, Sapphire, don't be upset at us! We need to try and calm her down. Galaxia, you need to work harder. Come on, let's, let's go. Let's go get it. Let's go get it! We need to work harder! Okay, while she's trying to figure things out... Oh, okay, well, let's just... Oh jeez, I forgot that she can't actually leave the room. Um, yeah, my goodness, my goodness. Come on, let's go down. Where is, where did Sapphire go? Let's fly there as a bat. I don't know if locking the doors mean they can't, no, yeah. I don't think they can leave the room either. Uh-oh, are you stuck? Woman. Galaxia! See, Galaxia, this is why you don't go to places where you're not supposed to. Um, because then you get stuck and things become awkward. Where is... Where did she go? Oh, I'm just, like, losing her everywhere. Okay, let's, uh, fly here as a bat. Please tell me you can do that. Now that you're not just stuck sitting on bed. Come on! Galaxia. Galaxia, please, work with me. Yep, there we go. There we go. She was confused for a second. So, come on. What, is she being, is she busy being frustrated? Uh, stargaze. Let's go out and stargaze. Maybe that's going to help our relationship a little bit. Come on, let's stargaze. I mean, the sun's not going to be out for a couple of hours unless you guys dilly-dally. <sighs> My goodness. Oh, look, Zelda's jogging. That's quite nice. Really? What's she gonna do? Go out and do some stargazing. It's gonna be good for you. It'll be nice and sweet. Um, also, one of the things um, you lovelies have been asking quite consistently is when this generation is gonna end and the next generation starts. Well, guys, um, I feel like I have mentioned this in the comments and in the videos beforehand, but right now we are waiting for Siri to age up. So, when Siri has her birthday, look, her birthday's here, okay? When Siri has her birthday and she ages up into an immortal, then we'll end the season. 
Next question, when is the season, next season, next generation going to begin? The next generation is going to begin once I am done making the brand new castle. I have yet to finish building that. Um, so there is at least going to be a month break, at least. There's going to be a month break um, after we end this season, if not more, depending on how long it takes me to build that castle. And then, you know, I have to prep the new intro and um, get things in place, the thumbnails, it, it takes time and effort, guys. So once I have all of that done, then I will be getting the next generation going. Um, so yeah, we, we have some things that need to be worked on. Guys, I don't like it when we're this close to it being... Like, I feel like when it's... Um, can you jog here? Can you jog here? I feel like when it's 3 a.m. it's too close because of how much the characters lag and stuff. It's too close to be out in the sun. I don't feel like I can be... I can do that comfortably. Okay, now she doesn't even feel good from being stung by bees. Where did you go? No, where... What are you doing? Where are you? Galaxia is just... She's struggling a little bit. She's just all over the place. Not necessarily in the places I want her to be in, just all over the place. Can you just snag Sapphire somehow? Let's ask about her hobbies and her skills. What kind of stuff does, um, does Sapphire like? Let's, let's go down, get to know a little bit more. Maybe we need to strengthen that relationship before she's going to allow us. But also it might help if she's in a good mood. I mean, she was very angry that we woke her up at midnight. Obviously, that wasn't the best time for Galaxia to make her power move. Come on. Where is she? Where is she? She's down here. You're up there. Now she's going to go view a collection of something somewhere. Can you even go into the treasury? You shouldn't be able to go into the treasury. Just saying. Um, I think it's locked. So I'm not entirely sure how they would even get in there. Hold on a second. Let's unlock. Let's lock for everyone but Wisteria. And then we want to give the scholars access. Allow access to Oriana. Um, allow access to Yuki. So the scholar and the scholar in line. Um, Galaxia. Come on, are you going to bat form? Oh, Yuki, did you have a problem? She needed some medical assistance from Galaxia. That makes sense, that's fine. Galaxia is the priestess in line, so I have no problem with that. But she is trying to work on Sapphire quite a bit. This is important. This is very important. So, okay, come on. Let's, let's get closer. Let's get closer. These vampires, they're very dangerous. They have dangerous ambitions. They might seem nice, but that's probably not entirely the case. I mean, Saphira and Galaxia are by no means as mean as their aunt slash and mother. Their aunts and their mother. But... That doesn't mean they have a heart of gold necessarily. They have grown up with a bunch of practices, some interesting ways of thinking, and um, because of that, they they might be just probably without realizing it a bit more sinister than than most might believe. Okay, we're inching a little bit closer, and she's in a good mood. So let's discuss interests, and we can use that as a segue into how we're interested in a mutually beneficial relationship, like me helping you get situated in the coven and you letting us drink some fresh plasma. So <laughs> let's get that going. Aphrodite is joining us. Aphrodite, now is not the best time, honey. Now is not the best time. Come on. Now we're throwing jokes and stuff. Let's, um... Let's ask permission for drink. 
We'll try again. She's in a better mood. It still might not work, but oh, oh. Oh, she offered her wrist. We succeeded. So, see guys? See, we just had to work for it a little bit harder than uh, we usually would. But look at this. Sapphire, after rejecting Galaxia twice, has finally succumbed to the priestess in line's charms. Maybe she finds it valuable um, to kind of give up this little bit of herself if it means that um, Galaxia can help her have a positive kind of impression on everyone. Um, so after kind of being wary of Galaxia for a while, I think because she hasn't been getting that much interaction with Wisteria, like Wisteria hasn't summoned her or anything like that, um, maybe, maybe Sapphire thought, you know what, maybe I do need Galaxia, who is a respected member of the Coven in the next generation, you know, to, to talk me up a little bit. So there we go. We got that done. And now, Sapphire, no doubt, she's feeling a little bit, um, Actually, let's uh, let's go use the restroom. But then, why don't you approach Zelda for a foot massage? And um, I think that's like treatment, right? She needs to get treated. Um, obviously, she is feeling tired. She got recently bitten, so she's not feeling too well. And um, Zelda is gonna help her out with that. So let's ask for, let's see, ask for, um, now we need, let's see, there we go, there we go. She needs her feet treated, so we'll go do that, we'll go do that, um, I think she's deserved, she, she's deserved it. Um, and then we can start wrapping up the episode. But let's go up. Let's go up. I almost feel like Zelda and um, Galaxia are working in tandem to um, get Sapphire under control. But um, that's fine and well. That's Sapphire's on her own. She has to be able to, whether it's real, whether it's fake, she needs to be able to maintain her relationship with all the vampires um, if she's going to survive, right? I mean, she is not young anymore. She doesn't have the time or um, I feel the capability to be able to build up her powers and, you know, stand up to everyone she comes across because it's just, it's out of her, it's out of her ability right now. If she was young, then it might have been different, but she's not. So in her old years, and as someone who is probably not as magically um, trained as Zora was, I think it's safer for her to use her brain and um, rely on the actions of others. Um, and I don't, I think a part of her enjoys it too. It's not just ability, I think it's personality as well. Okay. Now, did the queen just go past, maybe? If she did, she, I think the queen might um, approve of her beloved Sapphire being um, taken care of the way that she is. So, okay, that's helping with being recently bitten. So, that's good. That's good. Oh, look at her. Look at her! But I'm thinking the next generation as well. I might be a bit more like lenient with these wellness whims because previously I I usually don't do the wellness whims. I don't know, even though I have all these wellness things because I feel like, well, it's like that vampire's, you know, stature is way too high to be giving a foot massage or whatever massage to this other sim. But recently I've started thinking of it a little bit differently. Um, and I see the massages as medical treatment for an illness or for like an issue, a problem, a pain rather than relaxation. So 
that helps line like kind of in be in line with the the role of priestess and being someone who is also um, medically talented so that works for me I like it quite a bit anyways guys with that said and done I think now is a good time for us to wrap up um, and we very well might be picking up next time during the Royal Tournament. I mean, I might, since we have done like all of the important things we needed to do, unless something very sudden happens, like if Sapphire suddenly dies, I mean, she is an elder right now. I feel like she has a bit to go. We haven't been with her for that many episodes, so I don't think she's going to die anytime soon, I hope. Um, but unless something drastic like that happens, if someone dies, or if um, we have um, some, something like that, I, I think that I'm most probably going to pick up in the next episode with like the Royal Tournament, because I want to do that, and then I want to do the birthday. Um, so we'll have to see. The Royal Tournament might very well end up going into Wednesday. Um, especially because we have like all these sims, and... Um, <sighs> we'll have to see. I might do series birthday, because I'm not giving her a makeover um, as an immortal. Um, because I, f I usually give all my sims makeovers in a new generation anyways. So I feel like it'd be silly to give her a makeover and then another one. So I'm most likely going to keep her appearance as is, and then I'll do her makeover as part of the next generation's court. But I'm thinking that uh, we might actually, in the next episode, start off having her birthday as the very first thing. And then we'll go into the tournament. Um, because we have all these sims here. And I think we've got 10 sims right now. Um, the queen typically doesn't take part in the tournament. So if we minus the queen and sapphire, we have 8 vampires. 8 vampires that can fight each other. So we're going to continue working on their powers. And then at the tournament, I don't know how long it's going to take. Could be short, could be long. Um, but this is kind of fun because we typically have the tournaments when our vampire numbers are quite low or we have like a bunch of kids that can't participate. But this is one of the first times we're having like all of the sims who are of age and able to participate. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to see who's going to um, rise to the top. You guys can already start speculating if you want um, as to who is going to do that. So once we get those episodes done, who knows? Maybe in another two episodes time we'll wrap up the series. Uh, I mean, we'll wrap up the the season and then I'll start working on the castle a bit more. But, okay guys. Again, thank you. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.